So again, now, we're, I'm Alan, this is Nita. Well, we've been married for over 30 years. We have when three, I call your name. <laughs> we have three children, seven grands. I have, I have six grand boys and one granddaughter, one granddaughter McKinley, amen. my last one, yes. Amen. So we just wanted to uh, say thank you. We think we're, we're qualified to speak on this subject. We have served uh, under the uh, tutelage of pastor. We have served uh, under the Greens who uh, led our covenant partners ministry. They are now our current marriage counselors. So uh, we've served under them as well as we've been leaders in covenant partners or in our marriage couples. So uh, we believe that we're qualified to do this and uh, just sit back. We're not just gonna talk to the married couples. We're gonna talk to singles. We're gonna talk to those who uh, are engaged or who are uh, designing to be married. So with that being said, Pastor already mentioned that he's been speaking on this uh, subject of honor or honor code as a series. We're going to continue with that from a marriage perspective. Amen. And yet everyone will be able to pull what the Lord has to say. So uh, with that, we only have X amount of time. So we're going to get ahead and get started. We're going to go ahead and pray. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to come before you. We thank you for those that are sitting here today in this sanctuary, ready to receive from you, Heavenly Father. Father, we thank you that you're using us as vessels to speak to our brothers and to our sisters, to speak to the lost and the unchurched. We thank you, Father. Here's an opportunity that we can all grow and have more understanding of you, more wisdom of you, more knowledge of you, and more revelation of you. Father, we thank you that this is the day that you've made. Today, we celebrate this day. Yes. We celebrate with our loved ones. And Father, we thank you that it is this particular day you've made it our turn to speak to your people and we don't take that lightly we thank you for the man of God and the woman of God and allowing us to speak here and to what you've given to them so to speak to their sheep father we say thank you as they're the under shepherd so again father we give you the glory we give you the honor and we give you the praise in Jesus majestic name thank God amen, amen. hallelujah so there's a couple of definitions that are like we've been hearing about honor uh, as pastors talked about honor code Here's just a couple that I want to talk about, or a few that I want to talk about. Honor means to esteem value or great respect. Uh, to bestow value on someone highly. And here's one that I uh, enjoyed when I read it. One of the uh, words for honor was precious. So, and I, and I saw that in like 1 Corinthians 3.12, don't turn there, it says, uh, it speaks of gold and silver and then a precious stone. Now, when we think precious stone, we think rubies and diamonds and things of that nature, right? But then we also hear that we talk about that, what, precious blood of Christ Jesus. So God is talking about honor and marriage. He's talking about this precious blood. First, uh, 2 Peter 1, 4 mentions, again, something that we have. It says, we are giving exceeding great and precious promises from our Heavenly Father. Marriages are precious and should be honored. Amen. Amen. We're going to go right from the very beginning. Let's jump right into uh, uh, Genesis chapter 2, verses 20 through 25. And we're going to be reading out of the Amplified uh, Translation. So whatever you have, that's going to be fine. Oh, that's great. So I'm going to go ahead and start reading here. So it says here, and it's talking about the first man, and it's going to talk about the first woman, obviously. Uh, and Adam gave names to all the livestock and to all the birds of the air and to every wild beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper, meet, suitable, adapted, com complementary uh, for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And while he slept, he took one of his ribs uh, or a part of his side and closed up the place with flesh. And the rib or part of his side, which the Lord God had taken from the man, he built up and made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. Then Adam said, this creature is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall become united and cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. I thought we had one more there, uh, 25. Okay, that's it. So he, here's the thing that we want you to know. We know God has created this, right? He took uh, this woman out of man. But here's the thing that we read there. God not only did that. Oh, I'm sorry. Part of our message, a title of our message, first of all, is honor in marriage. We are one. 
Amen? Amen. Honor and marriage, we are one. So God now takes and creates this woman out of, out of a man. He then says, here, Adam. He shows her, and then he presents it to him. This is now your wife. And then he says, the two of you shall become one flesh. So, and the reason I'm saying we are one, it all started with God. So when we look at our marriage, we are one. The father, the husband, the wife. The father, the son, the Holy Spirit. We want to understand that when we talk about we are one, God has to be in the midst of everything that we're doing as a husband and wife if we're going to make it succeed. He's the one that initiated that. He's a part of that. I'm going to, he said, here's the thing. Adam, don't know what his countenance looks like, but when Adam was saw that, hey, man, God had made these bears. They got fur and all over them, and they don't look like me. And then we've got these elephants, and they don't look like me. And God said, he needs someone to help him just like they have. Let me create woman. Let me create something that's like him. That's why he said, wow, this is bone of my flesh. She looks different than everything that I'm looking at. She's not hairy. She's not looking like an elephant. She don't look like these things. You know what I'm saying? She looks like woman. Amen. So he was pleased with that. And then God said, for this cause, the two of you should become one flesh. And what's interesting, in the King James Version, it uses the word cleave. I think we saw it in that translation. Cleave, cleave means to cling. It means to be stuck. It means to, it's like glue. And yet, the other word that means, it's like you're stuck for the rest of your life. So when we say that old thing, oh, yeah, I'm stuck with her for the rest of my life, God literally meant that. Yes. We are stuck for the rest of our life. And we have to understand that when we do it God's way, we should be stuck for the rest of our life. That, that is my help me. That is my part. As a matter of fact, to go even further, God says, we are one. The two shall become one. Not one plus one equals two, but what's one times one? We're one yes. in everything that we do. And he we're was one. Right there. And God set that right. right there. So when we talk about we are one, we're talking about the father, the husband, the wife. We are one. Amen. 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 Let's go I'm ahead. I'm sorry, that's your write in, too. Um, the first write in was honor is precious. We gave the definition of honor. The first one is honor is precious. And the second one, God brought her and presented her to the man. Amen. Amen. So you think about that. He's presenting. He's bringing this woman and he's presenting her to man. That doesn't mean that we should go out and, and start, you know, women don't go out and start and say, hey, God brought me to you. <laughs> it's still a man's job. <laughs> Let the man be the hunter. Let us go after the prey, amen? Let's not chase them. Let's, let's do it in God's me. order. <laughs> yeah, that might happen, but yes. let, let, let the man be the, be the hunter, amen? amen? Let's go ahead and turn to uh, Hebrews chapter 13. So Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. It says, let marriage be held in honor. That means to be esteemed worthy, precious, of great price, and especially dear in all things. And it says, and thus let the marriage be, be, be undefiled, kept undishonored, or for God will judge and punish the young chaste, all guilty of sexual vice and adulterous. What we want you all to understand is here, God says, uh, let the marriage be honored. I have something different. Here it says, man should be esteemed and valued as something very costly, uh, treated like a, like a rare jewel, not just a diamond, but like a rare jewel or a great uh, piece of artwork. See, we should handle marriage, or marriage shouldn't be handled casually. The, rush, the divorce rate in the churches are over 50, what, 2, 53, 55%? That's casual. It shouldn't be treated commonly. See, in God's eyes, vows are precious. Yes. And therefore, he said, let marriage be held in honor for all. So, now, you remember when you made those marriage vows, some of you a long time ago, um, and you stood before a minister or you stood before a judge or you stood before your friends. You know, it didn't even matter where you, whether you were in a hot air balloon or a secret garden <laughs> or uh, at a house like us. At a house. 
wherever you were, you made vows to God. And I want you, you made vows before your friend and before God. And I want to, you know, remind you of that. So let's see. This is what you said. You said before God and man, I will be true to you in good times and bad, in sickness and in health, for better or for worse. And I know the sisters had a problem with this. They renamed it for richer or for <laughs> Amen. That's what it said. <laughs> I will love you and honor you all the days of my life until death do us part. Now, when that question was asked, you said, I will or I do. So you made that vow. And when you made that vow, your friends were there. But that, that, this, it wasn't just your friends and your family. There was God was there. Amen. God heard you say that vow, make that vow, make that promise. He was there. Amen. Amen. I, I want to speak to the singles on this. If you're desiring to be married, please hear us. Marriage is a lifelong commitment. Marriage is for the rest of your life. So I know we have the love and we feel good inside and we have this infatuation. You have to understand, it's to death do you part. And that's just more than a cliche. See, this is a covenant. This is not a contract. This is not like someone just getting a prenup. You know, prenups are interesting. We go in saying we love each other, but just in case, let's go ahead and get this prenup. You keep yours and I keep yours. See, they're good about making a contract there, but they're not good about keeping a covenant. Isn't that already a problem? And I, and I, I would question how many of those prenups last a lifetime? We can agree to disagree. We can agree to get a prenup, so just in case as opposed to uh, putting 100% in. You're pushing all the chips in. You're 100%. See, that's what marriage should be about. It's all in, all or nothing. Anything short of that, you're going to lose. 95, 99% won't do. It's 100%. 100% of giving singles, you're giving the very best, you're seeing the very best, you're wanting the very best, and if they're doing the same thing, then a lifetime is a short term. Amen. I can think now, these 30 years, I'm thinking, baby, we're shooting for 50. Then we're yes. shooting for 75. Let's go ahead and take this thing up. Yes. That's a long time. But yet it gets sweeter and sweeter. <laughs> the more you go. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. Honey, I want you to uh, turn to what? Ecclesiastes? Yes. Let's turn to Ecclesiastes. Again, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 4 and 5, and I'm going to have uh, my baby read it. When you vow a vow or make a pledge to God, do not put off paying it. For God has no pleasure in fools, those who witlessly mock him. Pay what you vow. Amen. You make those vows. Pay up. Pay your vows. And you know what? Not just, not just only in marriage. But, you know, we, we made some vows to God on our own. God, if you get me out of this, I'll never do that again. I'll serve you to the, for the rest of my life, God. Oh, God, if you get me out of this, I'll never take another drink, God. No, I won't. I won't take another drink. But you made vows. So if you made vows to God, pay up on your vows. Pay them them. Amen. Amen. God, God takes vows very seriously. Yes. We need to amp up us taking our vows very seriously. Amen. Uh, as the body of Christ. All right. Yes. So Amen. see, we, we've, we've got to do that because we've got to teach the world how to do that. So but we've got to amp it up. They've got to see that, oh, that's a man of integrity. That's a man of his word. I'm not talking about morals. See, we don't have to worry about morals if we keep God's word. We're going to do what's right. And, and what was interesting in that is, uh, and you don't have to go back, it says, you're mocking God. Yeah. We're playing with God when we don't keep our vows. Mm -hmm. 
Nina gave those two light uh, illustrations. Lord, if you get me out of this, I'll never drink again. Lord, if you get me out of this and I got burned with a disease, I'll never have sex again. And before we, marriage. We, before marriage. After marriage. Whenever. <laughs> My point is, we make those vows to God. And yet, we go back right into drinking and getting drunk. We go back to illicit sex. We go back to whatever is that thing that gets you. We go back to the drugs. We go back to homosexuality. We go back to those things when we ask God, if you get me out, if you take me out this time, I'll do it. And here's the thing. God is so loving, yet he does it. Yes. And then we go right back and Every do it again. Time. Yes. And he said this. He says, see, mock means to disappoint with mere words or promises. It's mere words of promises, and yet this loving father still gets you out of it. See, God will honor your, you paying your vows. Yeah. There's a process to that. You paying your vows, he will honor it. We're going to turn to Psalm 91, verse 14 through 16. Anita, I want you to read that also. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he knows and understands my name, has a personal knowledge of my mercy, love, and, lo and kindness, trusts and relies on me, knowing I will never forsake him. No, never. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Amen. So God honors you paying your vows. And you know, the good thing about that is we're talking about the, the God of the universe, the God who created heaven and earth. That if we set our affections and if we set our love on him, he'll honor, he'll first, he'll save us. He'll rescue us and he'll honor us. And we read earlier what honor means. What, what was honor? Honor is to, to uh, esteem with great respect. Yes. To value someone, treat it like it's very costly. Honor is precious. So God will honor us that way. Amen. What a loving God to honor us that way, that every time I call him, he'll answer me. Not only will he answer me, he'll rescue me. Even when I'm in trouble, even when I messed up, I made the mistake, he'll still answer me Amen. and honor me. In one scripture, it says that he sings over me. Amen. This Amen. is a loving God to do that for me because I know where I was. I know where I was, and I know if you just set your affection on God, what he'll do. And I, this, the reason why this scripture is so passionate to me and how I, I, I take it to heart is because I honor him with my marriage. I honor him with my marriage. And when I was going through all, well, let me just be transparent. When we went through our problems and when my husband cheated on me and when my husband physically abused me, I had to make a choice. I had to make a choice on what I was going to do. And I know you guys are probably thinking like, you know, you see us and we're this couple and, and you know, I hear you guys every Sunday like, oh, we just love you guys. But uh, me, look, you don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster box. You don't know. Yes. I've been physically abused. I've been cheated on. I've been, so you can't tell me nothing that, oh, I don't know if he can get me out of this. We didn't go through porn, but, because he could, when he got the real thing, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell me that your situation is worse than mine. Because when I went through that, I thought I was going to lose my mind. And I almost did. I know when the older people say he's a mind regulator and a heart fixer. I know about that because I've been through that. It was so bad to where, you know, 
and the, that's the funny part. Like, if you cheating on me and I confront you, you gonna put your hands on me? You the one cheated. But it was so bad to where I was gonna lose my mind, and I finally had enough. You know, women, you just said when you had enough, you had enough. And I stayed, and I tried to stick it out, and I was quiet because I thought that was part of being submissive, being quiet. So I was quiet, and it, it happened again, and, and it was like, okay, that's enough. He left. When he left, it was, it was bad. It was pretty bad. It was so bad to where my mom came over to my house, and her and Sister Buckley, <laughs> and they came over unannounced, and I opened the door looking like, what y'all doing here? Because, you know, you just have an attitude. You're just mad at the world. And... And she said, hmm, she just pushed me out the way. And I sat down on the sofa. I, I was so gone that I couldn't even talk. Have you ever been, you, you hurt, your heart is hurting like that. I couldn't even talk. And I sat there. And these two women in there, old ladies in there, just in there cleaning my house. I ain't help them. I just sat there. Because I, I, I didn't have no strength. They're in there. They're just cleaning. Up. They just laughing, talking about stuff. And. I was, I was just, I don't, I don't want to live. I don't want to live. And they got finished. When they got finished, um, <laughs> my mother came over to me, got in my face. She said, now, nah, I'm going to take my grandbabies. I ran you some bath water. I guess I was stinking. I ran you <laughs> some bath water. You get it right with God. And they left. I had a choice. I sat there. This woman is crazy. And I sat there, and after I broke some things and hollered some things, and I just, it, and it was a process. It was a long process. After a couple of days, I said, God, I need help. And when I said, God, I need help, he was there. He was there. And at that point, I set my love and I set my heart on God. Because at that point, my mother couldn't even help me. Only Jesus. Only God could help me. Only God could heal my heart. Because I was gone. So when you see me praising God, when you see me worshiping, I know what he's done for me. I know what he's done for me. So after time, it was best me and God, me and Jesus, me and Jesus. He could say whatever, come over, get pick up the kids, and it didn't even bother me because at that point, I was God's daughter. And you couldn't tell me nothing. You couldn't tell me a thing. And then, you know, I started, you know, I rededicated my life, and I was sold out for God. You know, I'm going to church, and then all of a sudden, he starts coming to church. <laughs> but, but, but guess what? I didn't let that move me. That I didn't, I didn't, I, at that point, it was me and God was so tight. He couldn't, he couldn't, I didn't, I, no, no, nothing. So me and God, and after time, after time, after time, and I'm making a long story short, but uh, my mother was like, Johnny, I think, it's time you take your husband back. <laughs> and so Jesus come off the throne <laughs> and tell me himself. But as I stayed with God and, and, and renewed my dedication to that's why it's so important for you, single, married, you got to have your own relationship with God for yourself. Okay? You got to have that for yourself. So, you know, after time, and then I gave him another chance. <laughs> okay, now, now, I would love to tell you all my version, but my version is, <laughs> that's, that's the same version. But I, but I do want to say, say this to you. I was serving in church at this time. Usher, 
uh, went to service then on, on Sundays, and we went Sunday night, and we went Wednesday and Fridays. I'm the first, I was the first Corinthian Christian. I was the most carnal Christian. Peter, adulterer, physically abusing my wife. So you know if I'm physically abusing my wife, I'm mentally abusing my wife. I'm emotionally abusing my wife. I'm a liar. I just was checking off the Ten Commandments. Outside of marriage, I was coveting. I was lying. I was doing all those things. I even used back then call myself Al. All the ladies love Al. I was just, just messed up. <laughs> This is where I was. But sin will make a fool out of you. And, and it made a fool of me. And these are the things that I was thinking. See, now when folks call me Al, only a few people that's, that really know I'm okay with. Anyone else? Oh, I'm Alan. See, that was that old man. I don't even go with that. I got a few that can call me Al because they know me as brother and sister. I think actually Minister Gray's about the only one that calls me that. And he's cool because he's not talking about that. He knows me as a brother in Christ. This is just foolishness. I was always seeking, you know, because I'm not going to say it's bad teaching that I got growing up. I'm not going to say I grew up in a church. It wasn't that. These were choices that I made. I chose to treat my wife like that. And what's amazing, she was so beautiful that when we were separated, she told you that this is over a year's time, maybe a year and a half, we're separated. And this woman would still call me and say, I see your team lost in the championship. How you doing? And I would be laying with another woman. And her heart was still fixed on me. This is the godly woman that I needed. And one of the first things, when I first met her, I better not go on with all that. When I first met her, yeah, I'm going to tell you. I had all these pictures on my wall of uh, women I conquered. And she came over one day. She was looked at my wall of all these ladies I conquered. She didn't say anything. She just looked. Or did you did you say you know all these ladies? She no. just looked. But with such a look of disappointment, the next time she visited, I took them all down. They were all down. I, and I'm saying this, I knew in my inner man that this was going to be my wife. And yet after I got married, I treated her just like that. It was, it, was, it was ridiculous. It was crazy. And, you know, when you, when you get God's word, you learn about God. I learned very early in, in my relationship with Christ. We started going to her church. We got saved. God, we would, we had to, let me, I'm saying, I hope I've said this the right way. I had to know who Christ was right away, very early. We had our first child, our daughter. Then we had our, uh, my, she was pregnant with my son. And when she was pregnant with my son, month two or whenever we found out we were pregnant, up until the ninth month, my baby boy will be born with, uh, was supposed to have spinal bifida. We were going to nurses and they were teaching us how to deal Went with to this, class. to classes, up until our ninth month. And thank God I was energetic, on fire, uh, just getting to know God at that time. And if folks were praying for us and pastors was praying for us, and, and we just were believing God and believing God and believing God. So I don't know if my son is even here today or not, but uh, thank God he's here. Yeah. Amen. Thank God that he uh, answered and heard our prayer. So my son stands now 6'3", nothing wrong with him. He's blessed with a beautiful baby boy. But my, and my whole point to that, that's our miracle baby, but my point to that, God showed me uh, his love towards me early in my marriage, and yet I was messing around being the most carnal Christians that I could be. But thank God that my wife was praying and everyone else was praying. And, and here, here's what happened. Uh, and I'm speaking to brothers. I'm speaking to anyone that's out there. Here's what happened Why I went back to church. So I'm out there. I got a little lady friend. So we decided we're going to go to church, right? So we go to church. We're having a good time. Service music is good. And, you know, oh, I'm praying, God, thank you, Lord. I'm so glad to be here in the house of God. But thank you for what you're doing. And God's like, like I heard him talk, I'm talking to you. He said, 
you sitting here praying to me. I can't honor nothing you're saying. I said, Lord, what? he said, you're not even with your wife. This woman is not your wife, and you in here, you think I'm going to honor that? Y'all know that messed me up. So none of my prayers will be answered. And I ain't going to lie, I was struggling. I was struggling by myself. And yet, sin will make a fool of you. Uh, did you have anything else, honey, before I go into? Actually, yes. I want to read um, um, Psalm 91 <clears throat> out of the Message Bible. That's just good. It's good. It says, if you hold on to me for dear life, says God, I'll get you out of any trouble. I'll give you the best of care if you only get to know and trust me. Amen. Call me and I'll answer. I'll be at your side in bad times. I'll rescue you, then throw you a party. I'll give you a long life, give you a long drink of salvation, a Sabbath song. So, amen. He's going to... Oh, my God. Any trouble? Any trouble? He's going to save me and rescue me out of any trouble. And then he's going to throw me a party. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We're partying now, guys. Praise God. We're partying. We're partying. Hallelujah. 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 See, that time, I see what the pastor Amen. Okay. We, I want to really quickly turn to uh, 1 Peter 3, uh, verse 7, please. 1 Peter 3, verse 7. And the reason I want to go there is because I just talked about my mess up. I just talked about God not hearing me when I'm sitting in church. This is the carnal Christian. And at some point, you got to sell out to God. You got to cast all your cares upon him. The Bible says he cares for us. And you, you've got to give it all to him. So 1 Peter says this. Says, look, look what it says, husbands. Look what it says to us. Those who are desiring a wife, you don't have to make the mistakes that I've made. You've got enough marriage counsel, enough experience to kind of teach you. See, the Bible also talks about that the older, and I'm not considering myself older now, we're to teach the young men. The uh, older women are to teach the young women. See, there's some experience, and we should be taking you all right to that word. You've got to link up with someone. And in a moment, uh, I'm going to read this, and then she'll go talk about the, the ladies. It says, in the same way you married men should live considerably with your wives, with an intelligent recognition of the marriage relation, honoring the woman as physically the weaker, but realizing that you are joint heirs of the grace. We are one, right? It says, God's unmerited favor, his grace of life, in order that you, and listen to this, men, you've got to do these things in order that your prayers may not be hindered and cut off. Otherwise, you cannot pray effectively. Y'all want to know why, man, our stuff is jacked up? Look how we're treating our wives. My prayers are going to be hindered or non effective. So God can't even hear it, it's going to be cut off. So you marry uh, men. This applies for those who are single. Remember this. Do, do you know this? Listen, listen to this. Listen to this. If you want to know how well a husband is doing, look at his wife. Not how successful, not how much money. Look at her. And we can tell all the time. You can tell. Oh, they must be going through something. <laughs> Look at the wife. Her countenance. Her countenance. And we, you know, we see a brother. What's going on? We still look the same. But that sister, you know. You know. But the truth is, we know how well they're doing just by seeing them. This is how you know. This is how we know, hey, I'm going to go pray for this sister today. It's based on how we treat our wives. Yes. Amen. Make sure your man or that, that boyfriend or that one you engage with, single people, are treating you well and wonderfully. Amen. See, if we do it this way, God's way, take the love part out of it. Let, let them love you not with the phileo love, not this. 
Is that phileo or God? Well, I'm not er erotic. Not er phileo is brotherly love. Mm -hmm. Not with your eros love. Mm -hmm. Let them love it with an agape love. Yes. See, that agape love is a God love just because. Just because. That's what we need. So singles, please hear what we're saying. It's so important that you all start to strengthen the body of Christ. And you don't have to go through what we went through and now we're living that. You can have that uh, early. I sometimes, and, and she doesn't even notice, I sometimes drive to work or wherever I'm at, I sit and cry thinking about what my marriage could have been like earlier. It's wonderful now, but I could have had it that much earlier. It could have been better in an earlier, in an earlier place in my life. Like, thank God that we went through and... Uh, she's so amazing now is that, you know, if we dressed up like in the 70s and do college concerts like here. We play I Can Tina, and she don't have no problem with it. <laughs> is that a wonderful woman? We do I Can Tina, and she don't have a problem with it. So I don't have any choice but to be transparent because my wife is so transparent. That's when you know you're delivered. When you can talk about it and have fun and share in front of all these people, that's when you know you're delivered. Amen. Sorry. Okay. That yeah. we, <laughs> let's go to, before, before I go to Ephesians, I want to say this. See, and, and don't turn there. First John 3, 1 talks about, see what great love the Father has lavished on us. He's so wonderful. He wants to give us good things. He wants to honor. But he wants to sing. He said, I set my face upon you. Yes. My ear is listening to yes. you. He's such a wonderful father, and he wants to lavish things on it. He's given us his very best. Amen. He's given us his best. When they were sitting in the council of having he, uh, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, they set these days up to say, who's going to go down? Jesus says, I'm going to do it. I'll do it. I love you, Daddy, that much that I'll do it. And the father said, that's why he said, this is my beloved son who I'm well pleased. And then he said, I'm going to give you a comforter, the Holy Spirit. Oh, they just got to set up for victory. Amen. They got to set up for winning. Amen. We're champions. Glory to God. But, you know, if think about this. We're talking about marriage and honor and those things. Here, here's what the Bible is. When you read the Bible, it's really a love story. See, it's a love story about the father seeking a bride for a son, Christ Jesus. That's what it's about. The father seeking a bride for his son. Honey, let's, let's turn to Ephesians 5, 22, 23. 5, uh, chapter 5, verse 22 through 33. This is very lengthy, but we've got to get it out because I want you to see the love of the father. And we're going to be reading quite a bit. It says, wives, be subject, uh, be submissive, and adapt yourselves to your own husbands uh, as a service to the Lord. We always tripping on, oh, you're talking about being submit, submissive? This is the reason to be submissive. Because you, you're honoring him. You're ministering unto the Lord when you do that. Go ahead. It says, for the husband is head of the wife as Christ is head of the church. Remember church? Bride. Himself the savior of his body. As the church is subject to Christ, so let wives also be subject in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. So that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water with the word. That he might present the church to himself in glorious splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such things, that she might be holy and faultless. Even so, husbands should love their wives as being in a sense of their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself. For no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and carefully protects and cherishes it, as Christ does the church. Because we are members, we're parts of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is very great, 
but I speak concerning the relation of Christ and the church. However, let each man of you, without exception, love his wife as being, in a sense, his very own self. And let the wife see that she respects and reverences her husband and that she notices him, regards him, honors him, prefers him, venerates and esteems him, and that she defers to him, praises him, and loves and admires him exceedingly. Glory to God. That's a lot. Now, let me say this. We know it's a lot. We know it's deep. You see there when the Apostle Paul who wrote this, he said, it's a great mystery. I don't understand it. So don't ask me to explain it. But we know that he said, this is in relationship to Christ. So when we look at the church, who's the bride, remember the father is looking for a bride for his son. And what's so wonderful, let's go back to verse 25. Verse 25. It says, husband loves your wives as Christ loves the church and gave himself for her. Christ loves the church and gave himself for her. We're to love our wives the same way. We're to give ourselves for her. And see, Christ not only, we're seeing the church, but we're that bride. And it's so amazing that the, God is looking for a bride for his son. And the son is saying, Daddy, I got a bride for us, for yes. me. Look at this bride. I've got her, and she's going to be without spot and wrinkle. Here is my bride, Daddy. And they're both working together. See, we are one. The father's seeking of such bride, and the son is bringing and presenting a bride. And that's us, to him. the church. So that's saying Jesus wants to marry us. Glory to God. He wants to marry you. He wants to marry you. And, and, and when he said, what did Jesus do for his church? What did he do for his bride? Mm. He gave his life. Not only did he give his life, he took on our sins, but not just our sins. He accepted the adulterer. Yes. He accepted the cheater. He accepted the liar, the murderer, the thief, the thought, the prostitute. He accepted us. He said all of that and Father, she's ready now. I'm going to present that this bride with all of that. Amen. See, God is so amazing in his love. See, Amen. he can get you through anything. Now, there's things that, that, you know, we all can be affected by. The thing that gets me is, well, I want to say, I, God can do all things. Mm -hmm. I'm stuck on marriages. If he did that for me and my wife, he can do it for anyone. My son told us one time, uh, and we're saying this because we're partying now, and I'm going to say this just for this reason, and, and everyone's got their own testimony, and, and I understand that. And we're not thinking for, uh, expecting everyone to go through what we went through. But we know God's a healer. Amen. We know he's a, a fixer. Yes. As she said, he's a mind regulator. Amen. We know this. My son said this one time. He said, talking to some young folks looking to get married, and, and they were just jacked up. He said, y'all not ready for Mary. He said, my parents ain't had an argument. I've not heard my parents argue since I was in the eighth grade. And I said, what? He said, no. And the reason they was arguing is they was arguing over me. We were, that's the last time he heard us argue. And, and I think about it because we're, in that, we're at a place that we're partying. We fix these things. We don't go to bed angry. Mm -hmm. We don't go to bed mad. I can't tell you the last time we had those type of arguments. And I'm not, and I'm not lying. I'm not talking about a little disagreement. We've not had it. Now, I know her, so I know when not to. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's the truth. But she knows me, too. She knows, you know, the conversations that's going to spark her husband. And that might have to wait a day. Or two. Or two or whatever it is. And it's the same way. But that's part of that. So we're imploring to you, you single people, know that person. You dating and you want to you hang out with these guys or, or you want to hang out with ladies and you're dating, be late 30 minutes and see how they act. <laughs> be late. If they tripping, you already know. <laughs> Lady, you do the same thing. You, you, you Test them. 
Test them. Because this is what you're going to get afterwards. Right? Mm -hmm. And it don't get sweeter after that initially. It gets, they get nastier. I mean, sweeter when, when they, if they mad about 30 minutes, oh, they're going to be fired about an hour. Ooh. If they mad and they're an on-time person, and like I said, we're supposed to be there at 9 o'clock, and you still getting dressed on your makeup and everything, it's 925, that's a problem. You know, check it out. Check it out. I'm saying that, but I, my point is, we have really got to get to a place where to, to bring the body of Christ back and, and so that our numbers don't look like the numbers of the world. We've got to show some things that's strong. Honey, did you have something? Um, I, yes. I, think, I want to go back to verse 25. You just said it, actually. Husband loves your wife. Seek the highest good for her and surround her with a loving, unselfish love, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for us. This scripture um, basically saved my family, saved my marriage, because I remember when we were separated and I was with my girlfriends and we just talking about me and blah, 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 blah. And her mom was there and she's an older sister in Christ. And she said, she said, I hear y'all talking. She said, what do you want? I said, well, I want my husband to stop cheating on me. I want my husband to stop putting his hands on me. I want his, my husband. And she was like, that's why you don't have what you want. And I was like, what? She says, because you praying all that, you need to pray the word. You pray. I want my husband to love me like Christ loved the church. And what did Christ do? He loved the church so much he gave his life for the church. So it's a, a, another thing. Uh, brothers, sisters, surround yourself with men uh, and women of faith who've been in the faith a while, who've been married a while, so that you can get some um, wisdom from them. Amen. They, they'll, they'll tell you what's right and how to, how to really, and not just tell you, girl, you ain't got to take that. But this scripture saved my life, so I started confessing that every day, every day. Lord, I just want my husband, because if my husband loves me like Christ loves the church, he's not going to hit me. He's not going to cheat on me. He's, 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 I'm going to be the apple of his eye. Amen. He's going to honor me. So, amen. I just wanted to say that. And, and we want to say keep your hearts. I, I, I teach my, my boys. I've got, like I said, six grand boys. I've got my sons. I told them, don't be like your father. Don't play with God's daughter's hearts. Don't play with them. So I want them to know that. Uh, a terrible example, and I don't know if my kids seen it or not, but that's a terrible example to be like, so I told them, don't play with ladies' hearts because they give of themselves and they're giving their heart. And for us, it's a game. When you're out there, man, we know it's a game. It's about notches and all that kind of stuff. So I'm telling them, don't play with hearts. And we've got to grow into that and understand that. Amen. Amen. I think our time is up, babe. So we'll just say, and I forgot the right hand again, y'all. What's the other right hand? Uh, yes, but we'll just end with this. Honor is precious, so fight for it. Fight for your marriage. It's worth fighting for. It really is. You know, you can't, you got to live by faith and not by sight. You can't be, you can't live by what you see right now. Because I would have never thought that I would see us 31 years and we're standing sharing our testimony. Amen. Sharing our testimony, really? But if I live right there, I would have lost it all. Yeah. See, you know, what? what's our mantra? It's about what? Relationships. And what else? Not religion. Amen. See, when marriages are strong, then families are strong. When families are strong, churches churches are strong. When churches are strong, then our communities are strong. Man. So uh, my whole point of saying is that we're a family, and it starts with the husband and wife, and then, then you're rearing your children. And then we strengthen, all these families strengthens the church. And then we do that, we can take the world on. Right? We can fix our communities. So I want to say this. Honor is precious. Your marriage is precious. We say fight for it. So we're Can gonna we all stand? We want to pray over marriages. Because nothing, he said earlier, nothing is impossible. Your situation is not too impossible. And even in your singleness, your situation is not too, too impossible. God hears 
your prayers. We read Psalm 91, that if you call on me, I'll answer. The, the praise team sung the song. You call his name Jesus. He'll hear you. Whatever your situation is, Glory to God. whatever it is, call on him. And when you call on him, trust that he will deliver you. That was his vow to us, that he'll hear us. He'll answer us. He'll rescue us. Even in any trouble. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for marriages. We thank you for the singles who desire to be married.